The views and opinions expressed on the following program do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Nash Community College, the Board of Trustees of Nash Community College, or the North Carolina Community College system. We don't need no stinking budget! Oh, no. <laughs> well, you buy a hat like this, I'll bet you get a free bowl of soup, huh? I'm not wearing hockey pants. I'm gonna make him an offer again. You play ball like a girl! Leon's getting larger! Nothing but pure and simple old-fashioned communism. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. Well, thank you very much. Can I be in charge for a while? Hey everybody, welcome to Big Bang Cinema. My name is Isaac Anderson and we got a bit of a different face over here that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, coming to you from Wake Forest over here, uh, Bobby Blanche. How you doing, man? I'm doing alright. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So, uh, thank you so much for being on. In case you don't remember, um, Tyler was on, uh, well, we, I call him Tyler, but we're going to call him Bobby Blanche in the show. Uh, Tyler is not, um, Tyler Keene is not going to be here this week. He's out of town. He did not die. So, uh, yeah, don't leave comments. I know you won't, all six people. But, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Bobby Blanche over here was on the review back when we did uh, Logan back in uh, March or something like that. Yeah, right? something like that. Yeah, so uh, right. he's, uh, he, he knows his movie facts and we have a lot of fun. But uh, in case you've never seen the show before, uh, this show is a movie show where we talk about movie news, movie reviews, and everything in between. So uh, Tyler, man, how's your, uh, how's your day been? Been all right, you know. Got up pretty late, you know, day off, so it's all good. That's How are you doing? Good. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good and staying busy. But uh, speaking about staying busy, uh, Batman in the new Justice League film, apparently, according to Ben Affleck, is going to be a more traditional Batman. What that means, I don't really know. But apparently Zack Snyder wasn't really giving us a, a traditional one because um, yeah, he was offing people pretty fast in that movie. But uh, by the word traditional, I mean he's, we're going to get a little bit more of uh, one that we see in the cartoons and the comics. And uh, just something a little bit more that the fans probably want to see. And uh, something I think that I want to see more too. Uh, but Tyler, uh, what, do you think, what do you think about this? I think it's a step more in the right direction, you know, after the Wonder Woman movie. Uh, sorry, Wonder Woman. Oh my God, I guess. Wonder Woman movie did so well, I think they're going to try and make it a little more laid back. Yeah. So I think that'll be better in the direction they're going. Yeah. And like, we come from a little bit different opinions on this because I don't <clears> think you saw uh, Batman v Superman. I saw bits and pieces. Yeah, like, you, you know what I've told you, basically. And you know, like, most of the people that know that watch the show, I'm not a huge fan of that movie. But uh, Ben Affleck was actually my favorite part of that movie. I really like uh, the way he portrayed Batman, the way they characterized Batman in the script and the direction. I was not a fan of. Um, the way that he was killing people without remorse isn't really set up and it's not really a good payoff in that kind of sense. But uh, but yeah, um, just seeing the little clips, like, did you like Ben Affleck as Batman? Yeah, yeah, no, I thought he was very, very good as Batman, you know, I thought yeah. he did the part very well, he just was kind of killing people and that's not what Batman does. Yeah, and a lot, like, I think part of that is just uh, Zack Snyder just likes this really kind of dark, you know, he said something in an interview that I don't think I can say on the radio that he wanted to see, so you thought that was dark, let me show you how dark my Batman movie can get. But, uh, you know, kind of look that up, that's an interview out there somewhere. But, um, but yeah, Zack Snyder is not, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, because of uh, family tragedy, he's not in the movie. Uh, anymore, so um, Joss Whedon of uh, Avengers fame is going to be in this. So I imagine he is a big Batman fan. He's going to give us something a little bit more uh, traditional in that sense, um, kind of you know something a little bit more fun, and um, you know not you know Joel Schumacher bat nipples fun, but you know like you know something else, you know <laughs> something a little bit more fun in the sense like it's it's uh, it's nice to watch, but um, but yeah. Um, so uh, we talked a little bit about the Justice League, uh, just kind of you and I. But I'm, <coughs> most of the people that watch the show know that uh, a lot of these, um, you know, a lot of these reshoots like are really extensive. It's like sixty or seventy percent of the movie is being refilmed. Um, like, just so, uh, how much do you think of Zack Snyder's stuff is actually going to like remain in the script? I know they're probably reshooting a lot of stuff, but like, how much do you think 
uh, like his vision, like if he had the movie when it first began, it's going to be. Well, I mean, if they're reshooting 60 or 70 percent, probably not a lot then. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like what they do with Suicide Squad. They reshot a lot of things and it turned out to be terrible. So, yeah. I mean, it's more extensive than Suicide Squad. I think they reshot like the whole third act of Suicide Squad and a few things here and there. And they cut out a ton of Joker stuff because they realized they didn't really, they had a dumpster fire. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we could talk all day about a uh, honka honka kind of Joker, but we're not going to. Um, but, I, I mean, this one is like very, very extensive. Like, they're just, they're shooting the whole movie again. Like, it's like literally, like, I don't think a single thing really is going to be remaining. Maybe like a clip here and there just to say, oh, it was, you know, that's Zack Snyder's vision he had, but I really don't think so. I think they realized they had something that's not going to work, and they're they're desperately trying to fix it. And they better hurry up because it's you know, it's getting close to November. Yeah, it's getting close. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see what they're going to do with it. But uh, you know, who knows? It might be great. But uh, speaking about great, Daniel Craig, uh, James Bond fame, and also a, a few other movies like uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and uh, the new movie uh, Logan Lucky that's coming out this weekend. Is returning as James Bond in the 25th James Bond film in the franchise. And uh, even though there's been interviews, uh, he had an interview two days after he finished the last James Bond film called Spectre. And uh, he said he'd rather split his wrist with the mirror uh, in the room than be in another one of these films. But he said he was just a little stressed about the production. Uh, and, you know, he, he, he didn't mean it. But uh, Tyler, man, uh, you're a James Bond fan, right? Yeah, I love James Bond. Uh, what do you think about Daniel Craig coming back as this, uh, as kind of like the last Bond movie he's probably going to be in? Um, you know, I, I have enjoyed a, a couple of his James Bond movies. I haven't seen all of them. I didn't see Spectre, so I don't know how that one turned out. But uh, as you said, he, he didn't want to do any more, so I'm guessing they either threw him a lot of money or said, well, we'll take this at a much slower pace. So obviously they offered him something that he was like, all right, fine, I'll do, I'll do at least one more. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, like, um, I saw Spectre. I wasn't as crazy about Spectre as, uh, like, I got some really big, uh, like, Bond fans uh, that I know. And, like, they, like, uh, one of them specifically, I really, really like Spectre. I wasn't really feeling Spectre. I thought Spectre was okay. A lot of it fell really flat for me. Uh, the third act uh, fell uh, very flat for me because it tried to be something that I don't think it really needed to be. I think it needed to be something a little more original. And uh, Spectre was played with a bunch of production problems. Um, just a lot of, you know, uh, reshoot stuff that was messing with people's schedules. Um, just, you know, just hard action scenes with hard on Daniel Craig's body. He's getting a little bit older. And uh, I think he just kind of said that out of just stress from the production. It's kind of like um, Stephen Colbert said. He's like, it's kind of like you had a baby. And two days later, you know, you got, you know, like you got to get sewed back up. And basically someone asks, he's like, you ready to have another baby? And you because no, 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 no. I don't want to, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> but, uh... I think that's kind of, uh, he said that's not really equivalent to it, but I think it's a pretty good analogy. I mean, um, James Bond um, is a very iconic character. Granted, we had, you know, guys like, uh, what's his name? Roger Moore that was a little bit campier. But, um, yeah, James Bond uh, kind of changed when Daniel Craig stepped on the scene in 2006 with Casino Royale. Yeah, they which, tried to make him look a little more realistic and yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, you were the one that turned me on to Casino Royale. Is that your favorite uh, uh, Bond movie? From the two that I've seen with him in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah Casino Royale I thought was... Almost perfect. Yeah, but what about Die Another Day? <laughs> I know that's not Daniel Craig, but yeah, we talked about that the other week. That's that's a fun one uh, in case you want to watch it. But I think that movie was kind of like the Batman and Robin movie that kind of projected them to do something more serious. Mm. And Daniel Craig really does kind of give that gravity to his performance that I really like. And uh, Sam Mendes has uh, directed the last few. Who do you think? Uh, like, who would you want to direct this new one? Um, I guess whomever directed the. Uh Casino Royale. I Casino Royale? Yeah. Okay. I can't think of his name right now, but he directed uh, the new Jackie Chan movie. Yeah, yeah. The Foreigner movie. Yeah, yeah, the, no. yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that's a pretty good one. Uh, kind of starts <clears throat> it and ends it. I think that'd be really nice. Um, you know, Sam Mendes did a pretty good job uh, the last few. I don't know. Christopher Nolan is rumored to do this new one. I that would be that. pretty I interesting. That turning all right. But, uh, you know, he's done the franchise thing before with Batman. Uh, I don't know. I, um, his original movies don't really seem to be doing well in... For a lot of people's taste, um, you know, they either think it's all right, like Interstellar and uh, Dunkirk and stuff. Lately, he's not really had a whole lot of luck as far as kind of like storylines go to me. Uh, spectacle, definitely. He can give the cool spectacle. He can direct spectacle all day. But I don't know. Uh, guys, if you have any opinions on that, uh, please leave us a comment. And, uh, please leave us a comment on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash studio67ncc. We would love to hear what you guys say. We might as well do this since we're here. Facebook.com slash Studio67NCC. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we, we love to hear your thoughts. But uh, 
Speaking about thoughts on stuff, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, who plays Nick Fury uh, in all the Avengers films in uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, apparently is not going to be in Black Panther or uh, either of the Infinity War movies. So, uh, as you can imagine, he's, uh, he's a little salty about that. Um, I don't want to get in too much about kind of like what he's, uh, well, what he's been saying, but just granted, he's not very happy. Um, now, I, I think it's just because uh, Infinity War and uh, Black Panther have so many things they're trying to set up and pay off, and so many characters as it is, um, they can't really give it all. But what do, you, what do you think about this? Well, it's just like you said, so many characters, you know, I mean, if you look at the amount of people that they're trying to throw into Infinity Wars, you know, it's they're probably running out of budget in terms of who they can put in space for who they can put into the movie and still have everyone have their um, their shining moment. If you look at the original Avengers movie, you know everyone had their moment. Even old, even in the Ultron movie, everyone still had a moment where they could shine. You know, and I mean they're gonna have like what 20, 30 superheroes in the Infinity War. Something. I like think that? it's. I think they said closer to like sixty four characters. Yeah, I, mean, some, I know that's a lot. But I mean, wow. now, so. Um, um, probably just running out of room. I mean, I think I have the poster up here so, uh, somewhere uh, for Infinity War. Just kind of like the amount of characters um, that's in that, yeah, that's in this is just like enormous. Like yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. And that's just like most of them. I, there's probably more that they're not showing us because they want to save it for the movie. Yeah. But like, imagine if you put like Nick Fury's face in there. Is that going to be too much? Is that going to be uh, you know? Is I don't that, think I don't think it's necessary, really. Yeah, I do, I, he, he, he would feel kind of out of place. He shoots a gun, and that's really it. Yeah, and also <laughs> um, something that um, Andrew Small and I, uh, you know, uh, executive producer over here, he um, he said, you know, well, he also steals every single scene he's in. Like when he's in the scene, you like you want to watch Nick Fury, Samuel L. Jackson. Would yeah, you he's, he's got that gravity about him, you know, and. Um, see, yeah, I mean, we don't really. He doesn't really need to be in these new ones. I don't think so. He kind of take it away. But may, maybe they'll mention his name and they'll have like a photo of him in the background just because they say, oh, he's still alive, you know, kind of thing. But He's in hiding, hopefully, somewhere. Yeah. I, I don't know. He, like, he's representing S.H.I.E.L.D. And S.H.I.E.L.D.'s <coughs> kind of storyline, they've been you know, revealed to be HYDRA. And they're kind of uh, down now, aren't they? Yeah, like they're mostly? a little bit down now on the television show. I don't keep up with the television show, so I can't tell you what happens there. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how they would fit them in like that. It would feel kind of like forced, like they would have to kind of pay that off and... You know, for those that uh, know a little uh, sketch that uh, Adult Swim did a while ago, it's called Too Many Cooks. <laughs> and it's just like, it's something that keeps on going. That's going to be like Infinity War if we keep putting more characters in there. Uh, too many cooks, it takes yeah, a lot. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't want to get sued, can't do it. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, uh, Samuel Jackson, he's great as the character, but he's definitely not needed. I don't know why you would get so salty about that. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I, mean I, I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll put him in there just out of sympathy. But I kind of hope they kind of keep things the I mean, same. It's not going to really add anything to the dynamic, you know. Yeah. So. Well, speaking about not adding anything to the dynamic, Adam Sandler, who's been doing crappy comedy films for the last few years, is finally going to do another dramatic film starring Dustin Hoffman and uh, Mr. Ben Stiller. And so we have a little trailer that we're going to play right behind us right now, um, just kind of, um, just kind of showing. I believe it's called the uh, the Meyerowitz uh, stories or something like that. Um, yeah, Dustin Hoffman, uh, Ben Stiller, and uh, a few other uh, kind of good name actors in there are gonna are kind of go over this. And it's just a Netflix film, so I mean, I have no idea. You know, uh, it's gonna have a, a wide, uh, major release for this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, just the brief glimpse we got looks kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, Noah Bachman, he hasn't really directed anything huge or major, but he's been you know, he's done a few things. But um, but yeah, he's actually got a good voice, as you can hear. So, uh, you haven't seen this trailer, have you? I have not. So just, um, I'll kind of talk a little bit more about it. And Dustin Hoffman's got a beautiful beard. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm very, he looks a little bit like Robert De Niro there. Um, I'm not sure exactly what this is going to be, but I imagine it's going to be some sort of family drama, kind of, kind of with all of them. He's probably a little bit dysfunctional. Emma Thompson's in it. Plays, uh, I imagine she plays the mother. Ooh. And uh, yeah, it looks... Looks like fun. Maybe we actually get a decent performance out of Adam Sandler after, you know, Punch Drug Love and stuff that proves he can do dramatic acting. But, uh, but yeah, just seeing that little brief trailer, what do you think? I mean, it looks pretty interesting. It looks like all the characters are going to be doing something other than just comedy and stuff. You know, it looks, like you said, like a drama. So, I don't know, I'd be kind of interested. I just don't have Netflix, so. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it might actually come to a few theaters. I, I read that somewhere. I'm not sure if it's going to be a huge major release or just like an indie release. But um, yeah, uh, as most of you probably know, Adam Sandler has a deal with Netflix. He's gonna make, he made five films, or he's gonna make five or six films or something like that. 
Uh, he disappointed us with Ridiculous 6. I know how you can disappoint us from anything after Jack and Jill because, you know, that movie is just... No! I love my eyes! That's the best way I can describe that movie. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, he hasn't really done anything of really quality work. I, I think Funny People, I, I enjoy Funny People. I didn't think it was the best movie in the world, but I did enjoy Funny People. Um, and that was a bit of a drama, but it was still comedy elements in there. The man can give a dramatic performance. Why do you think he has it? I just feel like he's, he's come up with some decent ideas. If you look at something like Don't Mess With The Zohan or Click, like they seem like good ideas, but he doesn't think them through, I don't think. He gets a good idea and goes, let's do it, let's just go with it. Like the movie Grown Ups, I feel like if he'd worked a little harder on those, they probably would have been better. Jack and Jill probably would have been pretty funny if he sat down and worked on them instead of going, I have an idea, let's just do it, let's just go with it. And it, and it always feels like his movies are shot during a weekend. They always look kind of cheap. Like, no no offense to the man, but it's just the truth. If you watch one of his movies, they look cheap. And, uh, you know, they, they look like, and they always have ridiculous budgets. Like, Jack and Jill cost $80 million to make. And it looks like it was shot, in, like, in someone's backyard. And, like, during a weekend they had off. And it's the product placement is downright offensive <laughs> in his movies. And, they, and they're always shot in a comfortable location, like on a beach, or like a Beverly Hills resort or something like that. And people always kind of joke and say, oh, they get to, to ha like have vacations with his friends and just kind of hang out, like the grown-ups movies, same way. They're yeah. in really nice little, you know, country, you know, little <laughs> places and nice, comfortable locations. But I don't know. I, I really want to see him, because the man can act. The man can really act. Have you ever seen a movie called Punch Drunk Love, uh, directed and written by Paul Thomas Anderson? To me, that's probably one of his best films. Um, you know, granted, he has things like Billy Madison and The Water Boy and Happy Gilmore that people uh, all like. Uh, um, Fifty. Uh, first dates. Um, I, 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 I saw it once or twice. I don't know. I, I don't really know how I felt about it. It was a, It was all right. It's Little Nicky is like where he started going down to me. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, a lot of his films are like just bad, and a lot of his Netflix films are really bad. Have you like? I, I know you don't have Netflix, but have you heard of any of his Netflix films? I've heard of the Ridiculous Six one, and I heard it was just kind of down the second it came it, out. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a good film, um, but I uh, I don't know if these are like his ideas or like something his manager's trying to do. Maybe this is something he's wanted to do for a long time. Maybe he just never really got the chance. Maybe he felt like he was stuck in kind of that comedy rut. But I mean, I don't know. Um, do you want to see Adam Sandler do kind of more uh, dramatic pieces or do you want to see him actually do like a funny comedy for once? I mean, if he's going to do comedy, I just want him to work harder on it. I feel like he just doesn't work very hard on it, but this does look pretty interesting. I mean, the actors are in it are pretty decent, so yeah, I'd be, I'd be willing to watch this and give it a try. I think I will too, but uh, that guys, that's going to do it for our movie news. Uh, again, if you have any opinions on any of the things we talked about today, please leave a comment at facebook.com slash studio67ncc. We would love to hear what you guys have to say. So, yeah, I just did that. Yeah, apparently. So, uh, <laughs> guys, we're going to take a really quick break, but when we come back, we got a really fun segment. Stay with us. In a world where some things are beyond legend, they will search for answers. Be prepared. Hang on to your seats. They are going where no one has gone before. Until now. Just... <laughs> Why are you so close to me? I don't know. Let me back up a little bit. Yo, check out our show on no. Big Bang Radio. <laughs> no, <I can't. laughs> okay. Did you know Nash Community College offers 12 degree programs entirely online? Are you interested in information technology? Explore information technology systems, network management, system security, healthcare informatics or web design and administration. These two year programs are only a few of the online associate degrees offered through Nash Online. Students receive the same quality instruction and resources as on campus students without ever stepping foot on Nash's campus. Learn more about Nash Online today at online.nashcc.edu.
Hey, you guys, welcome back to Big Bang Cinema. My name is Isaac Anderson. And I'm Bobby Blanche. Oh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, if, for those that don't know, I, I keep calling him Tyler. That's just what I call him. Call him Bobby Blanche. That's what he likes to go by. But, guys, uh, a lot of movies come out, and the concept seems absolutely terrible. And uh, trust me, there's a lot of movies out that we've seen, uh, especially this year, where it's been a few good ones and a lot of bad ones. But there's been a lot of uh, really weird, like uh, interesting concepts that don't seem like they'd work, but they do. So uh, that comes to our weekly segment, which this week is going to be the shouldn'ts that could. I made that word up. So basically, these are movie uh, movie concepts uh, that seem like they wouldn't work at all, or uh, that would be just be terrible if they were made in the film, but they turn out so well. Uh, and there's quite a few to choose from, but we narrowed them down to uh, just these few. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. Uh, there's a movie from the, um, around the late 80s. I think this was like early 1990s is when this came out. Um, so there was a movie in the 80s called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. It was a fun time travel comedy kind of buddy thing. And, you know, people liked it. And there was a second one called Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. This one is bonkers. Like, this, like... Just if you haven't seen the movie, I won't spoil too much for you. But I'm just going to tell you kind of like the basic premise of it. So if you don't want to know anything about it, watch them. You know, I'd say watch the movie because you know it's nearly 30 years old. But uh, so Bill and Ted is based uh, in kind of the time travel buddy comedy. First thing that happens in this movie is that they die. They die, and um, they get the. They have to go fight the Grim Reaper in like chess matches and stuff, and they have to go like beat death like that, and they're replaced with robots. Think about that. Like, nothing like the first one. There's n absolutely nothing like the first one. And, like, a little furry creature from space comes or something like that. It's, it, it's, it's weird. Like, it doesn't, it seems like it'd be awful. Like, who came up with this? Like, they, somebody was on something. And uh, <laughs> they probably were when they made this, but who knows. Uh, but when you see the movie, it, the movie's done with such heart and such kind of, like, has a fun kind of attitude to it that, like, it's, it's so smart, but yet it's dumb at the same time. And a lot of people don't really understand that. It's so, like uh, when something's dumb, you know, when somebody does something like stupid in a movie, like the, uh, you know, like juvenile jokes, sometimes they can be done in a smart way. And this movie really did it the uh, smart way. I mean, they played Battleship with death. Think about that. Like, that sounds stupid, but it's great. <laughs> Uh, like uh, this is one of those movies I absolutely love. Uh, it's hard to beat the first one, but this one uh, comes up pretty close to me. But uh, Tyler, why don't you go ahead and take the next one? All right, the next one um, is a movie by uh, Ace Ventura. Came out in the '90s, like mid '90s. Uh, there were two of them that we only talk about. We don't talk about the third. The third was terrible. There's a third uh, one. There's a third one, and there's a. Ow! Yeah, it's played by a kid. Anywho, it's about a. It's by. The main character in it is Jim Carrey, and he plays Ace Ventura, and he's a pet detective, and he's got to solve these impossible cases for someone of his stature, and he does all these crazy, wacky things throughout the movie that make it seem like there's no way he's going to accomplish this. Like, just watching the first five minutes of both movies, and you'll be like, there's no way he's going to figure out what to do with anything, and he always ends up coming out on top, and it's 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 a hilarious ride through through both movies, like one and two they're about even, like you can't really pick between them. Yeah, it's kind of like when you hear the concept of that though, it's kind of like, you know, uh, a guy solves pet crimes. Yeah, yeah. Like that sounds dumb. That hairstyle though, yeah. you know. It's, and also it's Jim Carrey, it's in his prime. Like, they, like, I imagine that would feel kind of like a desperate attempt, just kind of like, we want people to like this movie to throw Jim Carrey in there because yeah, we, yeah. we're not confident in it. But like, man, it worked. Like, well, it worked great. Yeah, like Jim Carrey's performance, like I think that's probably the most iconic part of that. And, like so many people can, you know, Talk out of where he talks. I don't know. We can talk about that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely got like those. Uh, what's your favorite moment in the first one? Uh, <laughs> FCC guidelines. Um, I can't really give you a favorite moment. The, the whole movie, it's, it's one of those movies that like from the start to finish, it, it's got you laughing. Like you, it, you can pick so many scenes. Yeah. Um, it's all, I think it's mostly because this guy. This guy yeah, puts such heart much, in that I character. Mean, it could have gone so bad they would have got you know someone else to it. Mm -hmm, definitely. Like As soon as he walks into a scene, it's like it lightens right back up. It's like, oh, okay, cool. It's about to get really funny in here real quick. Oh, yeah, and it's one of the most quotable to, uh, things, oh, yeah, too. Definitely. And fun fact, the second one was actually directed by uh, the guy that directed Kung Pao, which is uh, we'll talk about a little later. <laughs> but, yeah, that's a fun one. But, uh, oh, oh uh, what did you say? Oh, the monster truck? The monster truck. I'm oh, sorry, uh, yeah, Hunter over here, uh, one of our volunteers just said the monster truck from that. Yeah, just think about that. But, uh, <laughs> thank you, Hunter. Uh, so, uh, number three, um, this one is probably one of those ones that not a whole lot of people have seen, 
Um, so there was a television show back in the 70s, and it was very kind of campy, it was very, uh, you know, very schmaltzy. It was like a, a smooth cover of like diabetic sweetness kind of in there. Like it was, it was saturated sweetness, and it was very 70s. So they wanted to reboot this franchise back in the 90s. You know, they were rebooting stuff back then too, so it's not a new thing. And um, uh, they didn't re really know how to do it. So um, when the concept came out that, uh, that they were going to take this show and make it into the 90s, people were a little bit terrified. I'm talking, of course, about uh, the Brady Bunch movie from the 1990s. Uh, so instead of writing a script where the Brady Bunch had been modernized and they kind of messed up the characters and everything, imagine hearing this for the first time. So the Brady Bunch is going to stay exactly the same as they were, but they're going to be in like modern times, a la the 90s. I mean, th that sounds like a disaster. That sounds like a cluster. Oh, come you know. on. It couldn't have been that bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, uh, when you hear that, I mean, it's like, oh, wow, that's going to that's gonna suck. And um, when you see it, it's so, like, the, just the comedy they get from, like, the fish out of water kind of thing. Uh, it's just great. I mean, uh, the, the dad uh, is an architect, and all his houses that he makes are exactly the same as his. Like, he makes a casino. It looks exactly like the Brady Bunch house. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's like every single one, and they all want to kick him out of the... Uh, they all want to kick him out of the neighborhood. Um, and just, they, they kind of me mess with a little bit of, you know, a bunch of the stuff that was going on in the 90s, uh, the grunge era, you know. Um, they have uh, different stuff with, um, like, uh, they, there's a lesbian that's in love with... Um, I think uh, Jan or Marsha. I think it's been uh, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I just it's, it's one of those movies that kind of like really sticks with you as far as kind of like those character moments, as far as kind of like when somebody's trying to break in their car, they're all jolly. It's like, hey, I've never seen somebody try to fix a car with one of those before. What is that? And it's like just have that kind of seventies kind of schmaltzy attitude in the nineties when everyone's a little bit more cynical. Everyone's got that grunge kind of era. It's like Seattle kind of stuff to them. It's hilarious, and they made a second one that's just as funny, um, to me at least. I don't know if other people thought that, but yeah, uh, it's a great one, and uh, if you have never checked it out, I'd recommend it. So, uh, Tyler, I think this next one's one of my personal favorites. I think it's one of yours, too. I'd like you to lead it then, because uh, you know okay. probably know more about it than I do. <laughs> okay, so uh, this next one. Um, so most people know what Star Trek is. Uh, in 1999, they decided to make a Star Trek parody film, except the actors from Star Trek uh, in this universe, uh, it was called something else. Um, they were going to, yep, it's this one, Galaxy Quest. Um, they, they were going to put them, uh, I'll make them kind of make um, a Star Trek esque film, make it 20 years later, uh, but the aliens uh, outside of um, Earth, they saw all the stuff and they think it's real, so they recreated it in, uh, in space. And they find these guys, all the, all the washed up actors, and now the washed up actors have to go act like, you know, their personas to make the aliens, you know, win this uh, war they have with uh, Ceres, the evil alien. And so it's this kind of fish out of water kind of thing, just like the Brady Bunch, except it's even more so because, like, they have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea where they are or what they've gotten themselves into. Tim Allen plays the Captain Kirk type character, uh, Commander uh, Quincy Taggart. He is great in that role. But if you hear Definitely. that concept for the first time, they're going to make a Star Trek if Star Trek was real. Um, and aliens found it, and now they got to pretend like they're their actual personas. It sounds like it, like it sounds terrible. It sounds like a train wreck. They could have gone so bad, and could have felt try hard, and they could have like done the dark, gritty reboot of Star Trek with you know them in space. Now they actually got to do it. But it was so fun, and it was just like a bunch of people stuck in a bad situation, which are the best movies. Um, which uh, one of these next that we're going to talk about is good. But what do you think about Galaxy Quest? I mean, I thought it was great, and like you said, it could have gone really bad hmm. if they got bad actors for it, but I think they picked, like, the right people, like uh, Alan Rickman. I, I didn't even know who he was until Harry Potter, but going back and looking at, you know, this movie, I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, that makes so much sense. Like, he's actually a really great great actor. You know, Tim Allen, like you said, is great. Sigourney Reaver, I mean, she played in Aliens and stuff like that, and she's known for being around mm -hmm. that those kinds of movies. So it just it kind of fit really well, I think. You know, the, the delivery of it was, like, perfect. Like, yeah. And the, the movie works so good as an ensemble, but one of my favorite characters in this movie is uh, Guy Pierce's character. Uh, his name is uh, in this movie is called Guy. He was an extra in one of the episodes of the television show Galaxy Quest, and he's like super full of himself. Like, he's got like the headshots when he goes to the conventions and everything. <laughs> he's wearing the shades and doors, and he gets sucked up in this whole adventure. And he's like he's terrified because like in the episode he was in, he died. Like he like he was one of those extras, like the red coats they call him. And like he just died the first part. And whenever they go somewhere, he's like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a die. I'm the extra that dies. 
<laughs> and it's the, one of the funniest things because Sigourney Weaver has a funny line where they go to this alien planet and these aliens are really aggressive and they go, we got to get out of here before one of those things kills Guy. <laughs> And he's like, he's in, like, if the movie was just about him, I would have loved it, but it's great as an ensemble. And it shouldn't have worked. It sounds like a terrible concept, but, uh, man, it, it works so well. But uh, I don't know if you've seen this next one we're going to be talking about, but uh, this next one is uh, Andrew Small's uh, favorite one, and he recommended this one to me. Uh, there's a film that came out in the 80s. Granted, you know, if you know Andrew Small, who knew he liked stuff in the 80s? But, uh, you know, uh, starring Kurt Russell. Uh, Kurt Russell plays a truck driver and gets sucked into a magical world. I'm talking, of course, about Big Trouble in Little China. Big Trouble in Little China is kind of a die-hard-esque kind of story. I believe it's directed by John Carpenter. Uh, it's uh, the third John Carpenter film that Kurt Russell played in. He, he played Snake. He played in The Thing. Um, you know, now he's in uh, Big Trouble in Little China. And this one, he's just a truck driver trying to save some guy's fiance, And he gets sucked into this world. And he just gets, you know, he just gets a kick to him. Like, he, he gets beat up this whole film. Uh, but when you hear that concept, Kurt Russell gets stuck in an you know, um, in underground Chinatown magic world. Like, that, is that going to work, like, for real? I mean, compared to the other movies we've talked about so far, it, it honestly seems like the more realistic It's more realistic, yeah. But it's so outlandish. Like, the stuff that happens in this movie, like, uh, if we could show that picture of, like, the big bloated guy, uh, again, like, if you want to see this... In a movie like fighting Kurt Russell, I mean that seems kind of ridiculous, but it's so like it's done with such kind of like fun, uh, like such a fun kind of like uh, attitude to it that it's so great. And it's uh, like I said, it's a lot like Die Hard. Uh, for those that have seen Die Hard, Die Hard's kind of just a man stuck in a bad situation, uh, and he's not prepared for it at all, and he just gets it handed to him hard. Same thing happens with Kurt Russell, except it's just a lot of funny moments, um, really memorable lines in there. Uh, it's one of those um, one of those movies from the '80s. It's um, definitely the people from the '80s absolutely love, and I love too. So uh, this last one, I think you could talk about this last one all day, because <laughs> you know, we talk about it all the time. So why don't you go ahead and uh, take this last one? This next one is uh, it's about a, a young young baby who loses his family to uh, a tragic evil man. He uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought the picture changed. Oh um, no, no, no! Not Stark Boy and Lava Girl. Yeah, no, not that. No, no. Um, he uh, he goes out and becomes what they call the chosen <laughs> oh, one the to, story, yeah. to to take out to take out the man who defeated his parents and stuff. And uh, it's a comedy, by the way. It's called Kung Pao. And um, uh, it's it's how, how did you how do you explain uh, they they took the main character out? Uh, they composited him out like composited they him out. yeah okay. they composited them out like he put, was against the blue screen mm -hmm. and they put him in like one of these old films and it looks really good yeah yeah no like uh, they, they uh, redubbed over a lot of the the original voices in uh, the film that they used for this and um, they uh, they even uh, composited a uh, DJ with a <laughs> a, a boombox boom in there every time there were certain fights and stuff it's just a comedy ride that uh, should not have worked in, in terms of like what it was but it's just co comedic gold from the start to finish it's, it's hilarious like I mean yeah that picture right there he's got a tongue uh, he's got a face on his tongue that can eat too it's uh, <laughs> and has a voice although it doesn't speak English but uh, yeah it's, it's it's a great movie if you ever you know want to waste an hour and a half you know it's it's got like a weird cult following like I saw it when I was younger I can watch it today and still like quote like 90% of the movie it's it's, it's a really weird experience mm -hmm. oh and like we, we do quote that movie all the time and that's a like, great picture yeah, I must say <laughs> that scene right there he fights a cow and it's a it's a <laughs> terrible looking CGI cow but I think it was meant to be that way uh, but yeah that movie's just so memorable and it doesn't seem like it works and according to some people they don't they still don't think it works but uh, I think this movie is one of those extremely underrated films that's like never gonna get that following just because it's so silly and stupid uh, and it seems like a terrible concept like you know the white guy composites himself into old kung, uh, kung fu movies and improvs all the lines like that seems like it would go off the rails real fast or get boring it never does I mean there's a scene where everyone's training with weapons and he's using a bow flex to train <laughs> like they're all using spears and you know doing regular workouts and he's like I'm just gonna use this bow flex <laughs> or he does push-ups with his breath like yeah. it's oh whatever he's smoking <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah Oh, Evil Betty. Oh, we we yeah. didn't even talk about Evil Betty, but we'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk about Kung Pao a little bit more later. But guys, thank you so much for watching so far. If you have any opinions on any of these movies, if we missed anything, if you don't agree with our list, please leave a comment at facebook.com slash studio67ncc. Yeah.
we would love to hear what you guys have to say. So uh, we're going to take a really quick break. When we come back, we have a movie review of the newest movie that had 100% Rotten Tomatoes for a few weeks or a few days or something. Uh, it's Annabelle Creation. Uh, so stay with us. Did you know Nash Community College offers 12 degree programs entirely online? Are you interested in information technology? Explore information technology systems, network management, system security, healthcare informatics or web design and administration. These two-year programs are only a few of the online associate degrees offered through Nash Online. Students receive the same quality instruction and resources as on-campus students without ever stepping foot on Nash's campus. Learn more about Nash Online today at online.nashcc.edu. Welcome back to Big Bang Cinema, you guys. My name is Isaac Anderson. Uh, so since my goateed co-host uh, couldn't make it today, I'm going to be flying solo for this week's movie review, which is on... <laughs> Annabelle Creation. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Annabelle Creation is the newest addition to the desperate attempt to make Conjuring into a franchise. It's directed by David F. Sandberg, who also did a horror, mov uh, horror movie called Lights Out. Uh, so taking place before the film Annabelle, this movie begins with a doll maker, his wife, and daughter, and uh, who bites it pretty fast. Years after the tragic death, they open up a home to a group of orphan girls. The movie then follows two of those orphan, orphan girls as they start to see some spooky, weird stuff. Uh, as for my thoughts on the movie, I thought that this was a pretty dull and boring experience. Uh, since this is mostly because the concept of a prequel to a prequel really doesn't really hold up uh, very well to scrutiny. Uh, nothing really even happens in the film for a solid hour. Uh, all the characters feel very surface level, and the things that transpire uh, never really catch the audience off guard. Uh, whenever you sit down to watch a horror movie, you don't want to feel like you know exactly what kind of scare you're about to get. Uh, pretty much every little creepy moment in this film was incredibly predictable. Uh, and that being said, I actually thought some of the camera shots were actually pretty well done. Uh, there were a lot of interesting framing uh, things going on and some visual cues that made um, into a few shots. Now, even though uh, the shots look kind of nice, uh, there really wasn't much to kind of grab on narrative-wise. Uh, as for performances in the film, uh, they were fine. Uh, there really isn't any big-name actors in this film, and nobody really stands out as amazing or scene-stealing. Uh, they're just kind of there. Uh, most of this, like I mentioned earlier, is because the content they were working with uh, really isn't very engaging or interesting. Um, that was a big problem I had with the film, um, a lack of engagement with the events that were transpiring. Because we don't really care about any of the characters, very little in the movie um, lands. For example, near the beginning of the film, the daughter gets hit by a car and dies. And that felt really rushed and abrupt, to the point where I felt like it could have been done more in the story with those elements. Uh, you don't really have to jump into cliche town to give us something compelling, but you know, they could have probably done something that was a little bit more of a correlation with the loving parents and kind of, you know, something like the ring or something. But, uh, you know, instead of the fluke thing that just happened to happen. Uh, this also ties into the whole possessed doll thing, which is the basis of the film. Uh, while the doll has a creepy look, they don't really do much with it. Uh, a bit of spoilers here. The demon that possesses the doll really isn't actually the dead daughter. Uh, and you kind of expect the doll to start killing a lot of people in the house, like a Chucky kind of thing. That never really happens. Instead, the demon can go anywhere it pleases, even to multiple things uh, at a time. There's a scene where he's in like a scarecrow and he's in a little girl. Um, this is really kind of frustrating, because to me, it felt like a cheap way to have little scary demon moments in the film. They had ideas for uh, scenes and stuff, and they just made no rules to do it. You can still have those scary moments, but at least ground us a little bit with some basic rules for the screenplay to kind of interject in that story, because you lost me. Uh, granted, not every sort of horror movie needs that kind of thing, but the scariness of the doll would have really benefited greatly from that. Uh, so overall, Annabelle Creation was a below-average horror movie. Uh, when I saw that movie, I remember looking around the theater. There wasn't a whole lot of people there, but the people that were there uh, were all on their phones bored. Uh, and if it says anything that your main demographic of the movie zones out halfway through the story, uh, there's a definite issue. 
Uh, it may have had a few interesting visuals, but at the end of the day, there's nothing really to sink your teeth into. Uh, I'm going to give this movie a 3 out of 10. So guys, oh, not the uh, beast! Not the beast! Ah! Oh my goodness! The computer's going haywire. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Oh my goodness! Okay, we're going to move this. Okay, so all these sound effects are going a little haywire. So um, since Tyler couldn't make it today, uh, we're gonna, we actually recorded his uh, little review of this, so you guys enjoy. All right, so uh, Tyler, what did you think about the movie this week? I thought it was really good. I mean, I very rarely have I seen like talent like that. I mean, it was just, it, it was incredible. To me, it's a milestone of filmmaking history. I mean, people are gonna look back like 50 years from now and remember this as like the Citizen Kane of our generation. It's, 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 it's incredible. I, I, just, I just couldn't believe that a horror film like that could be made in my generation because you know everybody knows the old horror movies like the classics they're 60s 70s 80s you know that they go all the way back some in the 90s nothing 2000s but I mean it was it, it was it was liberating because I mean there are so many things I wanted to see and I actually get to see it on the screen I mean it's not one of those films they kind of pump you up and then don't deliver you, you, you know what I'm talking about they kind of like like there's there's a phrase for this that I'm not going to say on, on the camera I like the whole, I like one of the jump scares. That, that was one of my, it, it was a jump scare, but it wasn't at jumping at you. It was kind of like a subtle jump to where it's kind of a pan around. Well, uh, what did you think about uh, Annabelle the doll? The doll was creepy, but it, it wasn't, it, it didn't overshadow the main creepiness of, of the film. You know, the, the main. Wait, hold on. Wasn't she the main, like, she was the main... Well, it kind of starts the creepiness of the story. But what is it? It's that uh, woman who gets possessed by that dead witch. You remember, remember that? The real creepy part, she's crawling up under the floorboards and they're trying to pull her out and she gets like in the fireplace or whatever and about the tree with the well, rope like, on it. Like, what? Huh? I, when, when was that in the movie? It was like toward the end. You know, they like try to pull out the floorboard and like cast like the dead witch out of her. I, I don't remember that. You don't remember this part? No. Well, that... Did you even did you even see the movie? Yeah, yeah, Annabelle Creation. Hmm. What are you talking about? Conjuring. He did it again. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we really do appreciate it. If you have any opinions on Annabelle Creation or anything that we've talked about so far or you want us to talk about, please leave a comment at facebook.com slash studio67ncc. We would absolutely love to hear from you guys. We love all your views and we love all you guys. Uh, so we're going to take a really quick break, but when we come back, we're going to go a little bit in depth about the movie we talked about earlier, Kung Pao. Stay with us. Did you know Nash Community College offers 12 degree programs entirely online? Are you interested in information technology? Explore information technology systems, network management, system security, healthcare informatics or web design and administration. These two-year programs are only a few of the online associate degrees offered through Nash Online. Students receive the same quality instruction and resources as on-campus students without ever stepping foot on Nash's campus. Learn more about Nash Online today at online.nashcc.edu. Welcome back to Big Bang Cinema. My name is Isaac Anderson. I'm Bobby Blanche. Oh, don't sound too excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, but guys, uh, right now we're going to talk about a little movie throwback, which is one of our favorite films and one that we really bond over. Uh, and the movie is... Kung Pao. Enter the Fist. So uh, we talked about this a little bit a little, uh, a little earlier during our segment. And that's an amazing, uh, like, that's an amazing cover. For a movie, Great I remember getting too. the VHS for this back in like 2001 or something like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, and it was uh, it was right around that time where you know the blue screen kind of thing was kind of popularizing. And um, let's talk a little bit kind of like the director, Steve Odenkirk. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, he he uh, is a little bit underrated as far as kind of like the a- impact he's had on some of the comedy stuff. He's only done you know so many movies though. Yeah, he's only done like two movies. He's written a few, and he did the classic Bat Bum. That's terrible. I, I don't even seen, mention that. So uh, for those that don't know, Steve Odenkirk has a movie called Bat Bum that he made. It's about 20 minutes, and it's ridiculous. It's every character is a thumb. If, that, that's that's all they are. It's just like walking thumbs and stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> That was perfect. Oh, come on, man. Come on! But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he, he's really talented. He directed uh, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. Mm-hmm. And um, granted, a lot of people weren't crazy about the movie. I think it's funny. You know, It's hilarious. Like, uh, we always talk about, like, sometimes they do recycle their jokes. But that's kind of his character, yeah. like you said. But, uh, you know, Kung Pao is kind of uh, the premise of the movie. Like um, you, you said a little bit earlier, it's kind of, you know... He is what's known as the chosen one. It starts with him as a baby and kind of like he grows up to be, uh, be a man. And he goes to uh, learn from uh, these kung fu masters to try to defeat this guy named Betty. Well, or Master Pain. Yeah, Master Pain. Master Pain, and everyone calls him Betty. Um, but, yeah, the whole movie looks like <laughs> it was Betty. just kind of like uh, vague improv lines that he had in there. And so, like some people aren't really crazy about that. I really like it. Uh, it's like a really long Whose Line Is It Anyway sketch if they made it a feature, a feature length film and they just wrote kind of a, a, a rough script to it. But yeah, that, that first scene with him as the baby kind of like kicking everything, uh, you know, uh, and the house burns down him going down the hill. Forever. <laughs> and just, just forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, and some lady, you know, finds him rolling down a rock hill. It's like, you know, he's just like a little baby and she picks him up and goes, so cute, bye bye and then rolls him down another hill. It's just like, <laughs> there you go. It's just like, Oh, it's going to be this kind of movie. Okay, fine. <laughs> and then it pops over a rock and goes... <laughs> <laughs> that always kills me when it does that. But uh, then it goes to a scene where uh, he, he has his first kind of fight scene. And first off, he's like partying with the desert animals. That's oh, always yeah. a funny thing. But there's a scene where he fights uh, like for the first time. You kind of see his kung fu things. Some silly stuff happens. You know, he like rips a guy's whole outfit up and he's wearing a bikini. And he kind of <laughs> goes away. And then, But there's one scene where he... Punches a dude's like stomach clean out. Yeah, it's like it's a big and, circle. <laughs> and but then the, there's a narrator during this movie, and he goes, "I mean, like, how is that like possible or anything?" The stomach blood. That's like his stomach blood or <laughs> something. I mean, I'm like, I'm no doctor. Like, he just keeps going. He's like, there's like bones and cartilage and stuff. <laughs> and that was like one clean chunk. <laughs> and like, it just keeps going on. Um, and there's just like a lot of fun, funny scenes in there. But uh, the whale. Oh yeah, the whale! Into like oh, a small oh, yeah. pool of water. Oh yeah, and oh yeah, oh. and uh, like, like when he's swinging the chain, he's like swinging the chain, swinging <laughs> the chain. Now I don't know what the actual name of the movie is that they kind of like composited uh, all the characters into it. They did a lot of filming on their own, like in location, but other stuff is just like uh, a 1970s kung fu film. Um, like all the Betty stuff and my like Master Pain, they're all from this 1970s kung fu film. Uh, but still, he overdubs it, and uh, you know, overdubs it so well. Oh yeah, <laughs> and like it's caught in the tiny net. Oh yeah, uh, and they throw a tiny net on him, and he falls to the ground. And he like falls asleep in it, and then he try, wakes back up, tries to get out of it, and he has to reverse yeah. the process. It's it's gold. And there's a character in here named Whiplow, <laughs> and uh, he he he's great. <laughs> and uh, oh my god, they, he, he's absolutely yeah, he's absolutely perfect. This character, and you know they're they're saying things uh, like it's just little little touches in there in the background. And a lot of other movies do this too, but specifically this movie that I was thinking is uh, uh, there is a there's like little moments in here like where there's people doing kung fu and stuff in the background like practicing, and they're going like one of us is wearing a push up bra, like they just keep doing saying that kind of stuff, and it's. Like just little touches like that. They actually thought of that kind of thing instead of just leaving it blank. It's right. great. Right. And if people eat Taco yeah. Bell, and and it's like, oh yeah, it's yeah, like, like, like Pringles in the background, oh, yeah. like stores and, and stuff. And like. There's a scene where uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Ma- uh, the master. He uh, he's getting carried by uh, the chosen one. He's like, let me know if you see a Radio Shack. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know Radio Shack got a lot of money for that? Oh but, yeah. Uh, yeah. And of course we got to have the. The famous scene when he's trying to buy some peanuts from oh, the man. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a lot of nuts! I mean, four bucks, baby! They want fries with that! And he gets in the wall, uh, walkie-talkie, what does he say? He's like, they just left with nuts! Oh, man. I'm going to give that one a slide for effort. But, uh, but yeah, mean? like this movie, like apparently I think this movie is like 17% Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. I don't it tells you how well Rotten Tomatoes scores things. 
Um, Annabelle Creations 100% for two weeks or something like that, and this is 17. Wow, this really? is criminally underrated. Um, Wait, is that the fan rating but, uh, or the user rating? I, I, think, th I think this is uh, the actual tomato meter, like what the critics say. The fan rating is a little higher, but uh, critic rating is like what you see. Um, like that's, that's what the tomato is. But, um, but yeah, and the last battle scene in this uh, is like when the, the aliens come and they're French. <laughs> but they're in giant pyramids, aren't oh, they? Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. Like, oh, no, no, yeah. There's like, oh, yeah, there's, oh, and like, and like, his tongue is the one that defeats them all. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I still want to see that sequel. I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, no, it would never happen. It would probably... They joked about a sequel at the very end of the movie, and, it, I mean, like he said, like 2001, he was getting the VHS for it, so, I mean, 2017, it doesn't need to happen, so... Yeah, um, <laughs> it doesn't need to happen, but I imagine eventually if Hollywood gets desperate enough, we're going to dig this movie up, and we're going to make another one. Or someone's going to remake it. That's going to be a shame when someone remakes No one's going to be that desperate. I don't think it was ever intended to have a sequel. I, I don't think that yeah. was just another joke. I mean, I, I really, there you go. yeah, I think, I think it was another joke, but some Hollywood executive is going to see that and be like, oh, wow, we can make money off of this. This is untapped. And we're probably going to get either A, a remake of this, or B, a sequel, a very sad sequel <laughs> that's going to be like an older Steve, uh, Steve Odenkirk trying to do all these things again. It works because he's fairly young here. Like, he's like in his like late 30s, early 40s. You know, he's fairly in shape, uh, you know. He, he kind of looks the part, you know, he looks kind of silly, he looks out of place. Maybe it'd be funnier with him older, I just don't think it would work. Yeah, He'd be the old grandmaster and still beating everybody. Yeah, I have no idea, he's probably working in Circuit like City now. Belly. <laughs> <He's still laughs> <doing good>. <laughs> I, I mean, who knows, it might be funny. I mean, um, it's better than some of the other reboots they do, uh, but never touch this movie. This movie's great. You can't do any better than this, uh, this movie as far as you try to remake it. I don't know what else you could do. The, the magic's gone. Yeah. The, the gimmick, the shtick is done. We don't need a sequel. We don't need a reboot. Leave this movie alone. Let us have this Bring one. Bring it back to theaters. Just do that. Yeah. And remaster it in like 3D <laughs> effects. Doom, 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 doom. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much all the time we have. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Tyler, man, thank you. Sorry, Bobby Blanche. Sorry. I call him Tyler all the time. Bobby Blanche. Yep. Man, thank you so much for being on, my friend. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to have you on. Please come back. We'll do. Uh, because we have a lot of fun together. And I'll see you uh, probably tomorrow at work at, uh, at the restaurant. Yep. So, uh... We work together, by the way, in case you didn't know. So, we guys, cook. <laughs> so, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, we really do appreciate it. And next week, uh, we got a lot of fun stuff coming up with you, along with all the movie news, uh, fun weekly segment. Uh, we're going to be reviewing the movie L uh, Logan Lucky, which is directed by Steven Soderbergh, stars Channing Tatum and Adam Driver, and uh, James Bond himself, Daniel Craig. Um, to, uh, Steven Soderbergh's uh, return to the heist film. I'm very excited for it. I've heard great things. So, guys, that's it for us this week. Uh, thank you again. My name is Isaac Anderson. I'm Bobby Blanche. Uh, stay lovely. I'm here today to talk about video piracy and why it's a crime. And a lot of people say piracy, they think about Johnny Depp or they think about some starving Somalians on a fishing boat. I'm here today to talk about the worst kind of piracy and that's stealing films. These the studios make these films to make the money. Without this, they, they can't feed their children. They can't pay the bills. They, they need the money from these films to pay for it. And piracy, it, it's a crime and you're stealing you're stealing food right from their children's mouths. I mean, it's, it's bad, it's just, just as bad as murder. Or human trafficking, or drug dealership, or selling crack to children. Video piracy, it's bad. And you don't need Johnny Depp to tell you this either.